Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are celebrating two things. The fact that we hit 5,000 subscribers and that it's been six months for me on YouTube uh, this past Friday. When I hit this milestone a few weeks ago, I asked you guys to submit questions that you had about me because I never really talked about myself before on this channel. So I thought that it would be fun to answer any burning questions that you guys had. I collected the questions and I divided them into four separate categories. So the first category will be about me. The second one will be YouTube oriented questions, whether it's about my channel or advice and stuff like that. Then the third category is going to be about books and reading. And the fourth category is specifically about The Witcher. This will be a more calm, sit down, chat sort of video. And since we are celebrating and I never get to ch the chance to wear my uh, princess tiara, I will be wearing my princess tiara today. First two questions are how old am I and how tall am I? I am 20 years old. I will be turning 21 uh, this fall and I am 5'7", so that's 171 centimeters. How did I learn English? Uh, were there any difficulties that I've encountered and did I learn it from books? Uh, so I actually learned English because when I was five years old, my family and I moved to the UK and then I went to this international school, which is why I don't have a British accent. And then when we moved back to Poland, I finished my education also in an international school because my parents didn't want me to forget the language. And now I study in Ireland, so I speak English day to day. So I more so speak Polish with my family. And uh, how many languages do I speak? Uh, so two and a half, I'm gonna say. Uh, I speak Polish, English, y hablo un poco de español. Estudié lo por seis años en escuela, pero ahora en la universidad no tengo lecciones de español. Y entonces estoy olvidando un poco. Si quieren comentar en español, por favor, hacerlo porque quiero practicar. Y lo siento si uh, he dicho una cosa en una forma... Uh, improper. Favorite hobby outside of reading. So the love of my life is windsurfing. I have also started kite surfing last year. I started in 2016. Nothing brings me as much joy as windsurfing. The videos that you'll see of, you know, the really good windsurfers that go really fast, we call that planing. And it's essentially when the tip of your board uh, lifts out of the water because you're going so fast and there's like white foam kind of behind you you're at that point you're going so fast that the sail is basically holding you up and your feet uh have to be in the foot straps because there's the danger of them slipping off and and you're just basically hanging over the water i remember the first time i went into foot straps best few seconds of my life before I crashed. It was so amazing because uh, you can put your hand in the water. Well, I didn't at that point because I was just like, oh my God, I went into footstraps for the first time. Um, but yeah, it's it's my favorite thing ever. My thing right now is uh, I'm trying to learn the Vulcan and I'm at the point where I can jump up and rotate the board like 90 degrees instead of the 180 degrees and I crash in the water, I get the edge and then boop. Number one place I wanted to see in the US. The reason that I took this break on YouTube uh, right now for these past three weeks was because I was in the US with my family going on this road trip through California, Nevada and Arizona. And it, this was basically like my dad's dream road trip. To be honest, I know this is gonna be super nerdy, but I was the most excited to see Good Springs in Nevada because that's where you start Fallout New Vegas. So this kind of ties into another question that I got about have I played the Fallout video games and the answer is yes, I've played uh, New Vegas, Fallout 4 and uh, I haven't sank a lot of time into 76 but I was uh, one of the people that very much got into the hype when it released and then was sorely disappointed. I know that people are saying that it's much better now but I just haven't really had time to uh, go back and try it. Uh, I also saw the Hoover Dam, which was really cool, but super hot. And Strat Tower, you know, Lucky 38 with my man house. But from like the national parks, because that's what we were mostly visiting. The one that I was the most excited for was Zion. I climbed Angel's Landing. It was a very traumatic experience for me, but I did it and I came back and I'm still alive. So I'm very, very thankful for that. But the Narrows was really fun and really cool. What do I study? Where? And do I plan on going back to Poland after I'm done? 
So I study medicine in Ireland and no, I don't plan on coming back to Poland after I finish my studies because maybe it's because of my international school background, but the idea of staying in one place forever is just kind of very scary to me. In the future, I'd live somewhere where I could work during the day and then windsurf in the evenings. Favorite Taylor Swift song? I don't know, man, it changes. It used to be King of My Heart, but I, I don't know, I think that was just a phase. Sparks Fly has really stood the test of time for me. Uh, for context, I became a Swifty in 2012 when my friend, whose name was Taylor, she was blonde and she had a fringe. Oh, and she was American. And she said that there's an artist who is also blonde, also has a fringe and is also from the US and is also called Taylor. And she just came out with the CD called Red and I want you to have it so that whenever you listen to the CD, you'll have something to remember me by. That's how I became a Swifty. But sorry, I got off track. Uh, I'd say my favorite Taylor Swift song right now is, it's between Call It What You Want and Sparks Fly and Cornelia Street, specifically the live from Paris version. Would I like to write a book? And if yes, then what would be my inspiration? The answer is yes. And I do have an idea that I've had for quite a while, but the thing is, I know that I'm not good enough to write it yet. And so before I'd write that book that I really want to write, I have this kind of plan of writing three books before that. I know that I've only made a few videos for this channel so far, 20 as I'm recording this. And so maybe my tastes haven't come across uh, too intensely yet, uh, like what I specifically enjoy. But I really like books that have some sort of logical argument that they are making, but they are conveying it through characters, plot, and setting. But that's why I enjoy books like Oathbringer, The Wisdom of Crowds, and Recursion, because I feel like all of those books have a central theme, a central idea, a central question that they are exploring through a variety of different points of view. The big question that I kind of have in my head is, we live in a world where we are motivated by resource scarcity. As humans, we always look for resources for shelter, but more importantly, water and food, correct? Because we need to sustain ourselves somehow. Now, what if we could photosynthesize? How would that influence uh, the way societies form? How would that influence day-to-day -day life? And then I also have this idea of, there's a lot of portal fantasy where we go from our world and we discover fae, or we go from our world, and it, but it turns out that there are demons and blah, blah, blah. What if it was the other way around where you have this very alien world that you spent, I don't know, a book, two books, whatever, in? What if they come into contact with a civilization that is very similar to our own today. This is years, years, years away, so I'm focused on getting my degree first and uh, setting up this channel. Next, I have a few YouTube questions that you guys submitted. Uh, the first one was, will I make videos about games slash TV shows if they are not related to books? And my answer is no, unless it's something that I'm very passionate about. What inspired me to create the YouTube channel? Since I discovered YouTube and I discovered it through a book utopia, I remember the days of watching, you know, Tasha Paulus, uh, Christina Marie, Christine uh, Riccio, Jesse the Reader, all, all the OGs. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'd love to do this. And when I was like 12, I created a YouTube channel and I had like maybe 10 videos and it was really something. Yeah, I, I always wanted to have people to discuss books with, especially since, I don't know, in my school, not a lot of people were really that into it. One of my final pushes was when I sent my boyfriend a 44 minute voice note when it, after finishing The Last Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to put anyone through that unless they want to. So here's the YouTube channel. <laughs> How did I start making videos? Plus, is there any guidance that I would give someone wanting to start out? First of all, I don't know if I'm the best person to be seeking advice from. We are very homemade here, very amateur, but that's fine. I, I hope that, it, that these videos do have some charm in them, even though they're not like as professional as uh, other YouTubers you see on this platform. I am quite happy with the growth. It's, I was expecting my first six months to be like screaming into the void, if you will. Turns out there's 5,000 people interested in what I have to say. So like, that's just so crazy to me. And I'm very, very, thankful for the conversations that I've had. One of my favorite things was the c discussions about death's end that I had in my three body problem video, uh, because even though I'm still very disappointed by death's end, my perspective on the ending was greatly changed by other people explaining how they interpreted it 
to me, that would have never happened if not for this YouTube channel. Kind of going back uh, to the question, the biggest thing I think is just getting started. You know, record the video, edit the video, even if you don't do any crazy edits. I mean, I edit all my videos pretty much in iMovie and use Canva green screens. Uh, you can re record on your iPhone, but then here's my big piece of advice. Be pop culturally aware. Be aware of what movies or TV shows are coming out, what big uh, releases, whatever it is that people talk Talk about in your niche be aware of that because you want a video that is going to be highly searched my first video that popped off was my dune video i knew that dune was releasing march 1st and so at the end of January, I went to my library and I was like, I want the first four Dune books, please. And I took them and I read them uh, through all of February to have the video ready March 1st. It did very well. Uh, that was crazy to me because it was my fourth video, I believe. I don't think it was like particularly the best Dune video out there, but I knew that it would be highly searched because of the movie. And then two weeks after that, I knew that the three body problem was dropping. Uh, so once again, I got the three body problem books and I read them as fast as I could to get that video out. And it got maybe like 7,000 views in that first week. So again, I leveraged the fact that I knew that more people would be searching this. There's another thing that I was kind of aware of when starting YouTube and it's the fact that when you create your channel, no one cares about you or your opinion. So instead of putting myself out there and being like, my TBR, my blah, 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 my thoughts on whatever, I knew that no one will care about me because they don't know who I am. So I need to start attaching my name to these big popular things like Dune, like Three Body Problem, like First Law, like it's Witcher. And then once people start watching these videos because they care about that said thing that I'm talking about, Hopefully they'll enjoy my personality, my takes, and then they'll start caring uh, enough about my opinion that they'll want to subscribe. And now my last piece of advice is balance out videos that you want to make and videos that you know will do well. I hope that was useful. Now, a question that I really am happy that I got, is my fangirling genuine or just part of my online persona? I'm very happy that I got this question because Something that I didn't really understand as a viewer was even though I am being genuine in my videos, by watching my videos, I don't think a person would know who I am. What do I mean by that? I have the tendency to ramble a lot and it's not very interesting when I watch it back. I have to cut the video down to the best 20 or ideally less 15 minutes that I know will do well. And usually it's the parts where I have a very strong opinion or I fangirl or I really hate something or whatever, just because that's more interesting and engaging to watch than me just being like, yeah, this was fine, this was fine, this was fine. And that is why my Witcher videos, I think also did well because The Witcher is something I'm genuinely very, very passionate about and have very strong opinions on. And so I think that comes across as well. Uh, I think my other videos where the point was to read the book and explain what I thought about the book, you wouldn't get that fangirling online persona in those videos. I'm specifically talking about the Dune, Three Body Problem and dystopian classics uh, videos. I, I do try to be a bit more uh, uh, thoughtful and critical there. I think it's okay to be a fan of something and still be able to critique it. Summa summarum, I wouldn't say that I have an online persona. I just think that by the nature of making an interesting video, I have to cut it down to the most interesting parts. And those most interesting parts will be the ones where I show the most emotion, whether positive or negative. Moving on to the questions about books. What ignited my passion for reading? I think I can attribute my passion for reading to my mom because when I was younger, she would always read to me before bed and I was a huge nerd back in the day as well. She read to me this book and there's videos of me having memorized the text and basically as she's reading it, I'm saying it along with her and back then I couldn't read, but I was very invested in <laughs> reading the story along with her. And yeah, honestly, I always was kind of reading something, so it's very hard for me to pinpoint when it started. How much do I read in a week? Uh, this really depends. Back in 2020, I was crazy and I would wake up at 5 a.m. every day to read 100 pages and then I would, I don't know, listen to an audiobook or if I read anything later, it would be an extra to that 100 pages. But I stopped doing that after 2021, I think. I was finishing high school and it was just very stressful. And now as a med student, I just 
that's just not doable for me. So how much I read in a week really does vary. How can you read faster? Audiobooks and a long commute. Uh, what's a book quote that has stayed with me? I hate to be that girl, but I'm bringing up the catcher in the rye again and it's the last sentence. I'm going to read a bit more than just the quote uh, that people usually say just for context. DB asked me what I thought about all the stuff I just finished telling you about. I didn't know what the hell to say. If you want to know the truth, I don't know what I think about it. I'm sorry, I told so many people about it. About all I know is I sort of miss everyone I told about. Even old Stradladder and Ackley, for instance. I think I'm gonna miss that goddamn Maurice. It's funny. Don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. Opinion on A Song of Ice and Fire. I watched the first six-ish seasons and I stopped right after the Battle of the Bastards because I just got bored. Uh, I'm waiting for Winds of Winter to release so that I can, and then I'll read the entire thing. What is my desert island book? Uh, probably like a survival guide to be honest, uh, because I don't have any survival skills. So I would want to bring like an encyclopedia of what I can eat, what I can't eat. No, but to be honest, I don't know. Maybe I would take uh, Les Mis because I've been meaning to read that book forever, uh, but it's probably not gonna happen this year since I am making my way through War and Peace. Now moving on to the next segment where I answer the questions about The Witcher. The first is, would I like to do a Witcher playthrough? And my answer is no, not on this channel. Uh, a few reasons. First of all, I don't have the equipment for that. Second of all, I get very shy uh, and my skills in combat are not great. And you know, I'd be doing it for the story and I know the story front to back. So I feel like it wouldn't be as interesting because like, again, it's very hard for me to fake my excitement or fake my emotions for something. So, so it would be hard for me to fake my emotions for the big reveals and the big plot points because I just, I kind of know them. But if you want to see someone who is very interesting, I recommend it's Bubble. Uh, she's very funny and I love her reactions to everything. Do I play other video games? And if so, what are my favorites? Yes, so I do play other video games. Um, I like the original Halo. I love the Fallouts. I really love the Elder Scrolls. Other than that, I played The Last of Us. I really wanna play Red Dead Redemption 2. If I could live in either the Witcher universe or the Lord of the Rings universe, which would I choose and who would I be in it? Uh, Witcher universe, obviously. Uh, <laughs> even though, again, I love the Lord of the Rings movies, The Witcher just feels like home to me. And I'd love to be a Rusauka or a Dryad living my cottagecore lifestyle in Brokolon Forest. Or I'd love to be a sorceress. They're so cool. Uh, the Lodge are my favorite, even though they're kind of evil, but I love the Lodge. I have a question that wants me to clarify my thoughts on Triss. I don't hate her, okay? I, okay, I, <laughs> how do I explain this? I think she's a well-written character, especially with how she's expanded upon greatly in the video games, especially since she's kind of not that relevant uh, in the books, at least compared to other sorceresses like Philippa and Fringilla, and of course Yennefer. Uh, but overall, I think she's a very compelling and interesting character. Any character that makes me have strong emotions, I think something was done correctly. Uh, and then building on that, I have a, I had another question asking me, would I rather romance Triss on every playthrough or never play Elder Scrolls 6? I'm very scared that Elder Scrolls get, I'm very scared that Elder Scrolls 6 won't be able to nail the landing, if you will. But I really want Elder Scrolls 6 to be good. And I think that if I had the choice between it being awful or never releasing, I would prefer for it to never release. And I think romancing Triss would actually give me brain damage on every playthrough. Like, I think maybe once I could live through it, but it would just be very traumatic for me. So <laughs> I think I'd have to choose never to play Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> Any Polish folklore slash classic books that I would recommend. And one that I would recommend, it's not exactly folklore folklore, but uh, if you wanna learn about Polish folklore, I think the best place to go to is uh, Jady. I, I'll put the English translation up here, uh, but it's basically this uh, very classic play and uh, The Witcher does take a lot from that. But then my personal favorite, I think, is Balladyna by Słowacki. And it's this very foundational Polish romanticism text. 
Basically, it's this tragedy about these two sisters, uh, but it's also the question of destiny and love and very big on, uh, you know, traditional Polish imagery. And it's, it's, a fa it's, it's a favorite of mine. I'd actually love to see a retelling of it in the Witcher world. So, you know, we have Pantfardowski, we have Strzyga, uh, can Balladyna be next? I don't know, let's see. And the last question is, are there any books that are similar to The Witcher? And I'd say that uh, the big one, I think, uh, is The First Law by Joe Abercrombie. Uh, it's not the monster hunter or, you know, that kind of found family sort of thing. But when it comes to tone, subversion of tropes char and characters, I think that Joe Abercrombie is pretty much like the British version of Sapkowski. And so I think that if you liked The Witcher, you're gonna really like The First Law. So give it a shot if you want something fun to read. At that being said, please push through the blade itself because it's kind of a slog. But once you get to Before They Are Hanged, you're off to the races and you're gonna have a great time. The humor is there uh, as well, which is something that I really love in Sapkowski and Abercrombie's writing because both of them talk about such bleak things and with, you know, some cynicism, some hope, but uh, fairly bleak things, uh, but they sprinkle in humor and I love their humor. I think it's very similar. Uh, anyways, that was the last question for the Q&A. I tried to answer as many questions as I could, but yeah, I'm so, so grateful for every single one of you, every single comment, every single like, and it truly really means so much to me that people are talking with me in the comments and we're having all these back and forths. Some of you are so witty and some of you are so thought provoking. It just really makes me happy that we're uh, creating this community. So yeah, anyways, that's all for me. And thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.